So hello, my name's Dr. Jeff Coghill, and um, I am a, well, what's called a, a, a consultant clinical oncologist, though, um, uh, or cancer specialist. Uh, and I uh, work uh, treating cancer patients with radiotherapy and chemotherapy uh, treatments. So I'll just explain that in the UK, there is a, 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 a a division between medical oncology, which is typically slightly more academically based and requires uh, uh, an MSc or a PhD during training, so some lab-based research work. And uh, medical oncologists tend to work in uh, uh, big uh, urban centres, teaching hospitals. But in fact, most of the cancer care in the UK is actually uh, completed by clinical oncologists like myself, who are trained in radiotherapy as well as chemotherapy. And in fact, we have slightly different medical colleges. One's the Royal College of Radiologists and the other one is the Royal College of uh, Physicians. Though in fact, increasingly, uh, the training for uh, both uh, medical oncologists and clinical oncologists will actually be the same. There's, a, there's going to be uh, now a common core of, 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 of training, but we'll talk about that again um, in a little bit. I chose to be a, uh, a clinical oncologist, um, having actually done a degree in an integrated degree in tumor biology as a, a, a part of my medical degree at, um, uh, at University College London. So I tr actually trained in uh, Southampton and then went to London to do uh, the integrated BSc in tumor biology. And then I sort of forgot about it. I had a lovely time doing my uh, a degree in tumor biology. I acted in lots of plays and had an awful lot of fun. And then I sort of, then I forgot about it and um, started doing a medical rotation because I realized that I you know, probably wanted to be a physician and went through that uh, doing the training for uh, part one MRCP. And in fact, I did the first um, um, MRCP PACES exam uh, probably about 20 years or so ago now, which I enjoyed because I passed it, having failed the other one before, uh, the other the, the old the old style exam before. So um, in the um, UK, um, you um, do uh, need to do your uh, MRCP to either become a medical or a clinical oncologist. However, um, we um, have, for instance, in our department. Um, employed uh, uh, an uh, Egyptian registrar who's done a lot of um, uh, uh, radiotherapy uh, uh, training and he's having to concentrate a bit more on the medical aspect when, he, when he's doing his training. So um, I ch chose my speciality uh, uh, because uh, I wanted to do a job that involved medicine as a physician but I also realised that I was less keen on the very acute medicine and the need to spend a lot of time uh, being on call, uh, particularly during my training. Uh, there are, of course, on-call components as uh, part of a, uh, the, the medical uh, registrar rotations, and indeed I still do weeks on call as a consultant, but the intensity of it is significantly less and there's less shift work than there, than there is if you're one of the uh, core medical trainees or are trained in internal medicine. Um, and I also wanted to do a job where I thought actually it would remain at the sort of forefront of um, uh, medical science. So the thing, the thing I find, uh, uh, continue to find stimulating about the job is that um, from a, a medical point of view, uh, with the new drugs and things that, event, that are invented, it's turning it more into a job where we are managing stage four or metastatic disease as a chronic disease. Um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm afraid in terms of the radiotherapy side of things, I actually quite enjoy the uh, technical part of that, the physics of the radiotherapy beams, and the really quite amazing way 
that technology has allowed us to uh, focus radiotherapy beams much more exactly than we could do five or even ten years ago, um, and also uh, uh, allow us to reduce the morbidity of treatment enormously uh, because of the way we can avoid uh, uh, very close uh, critical structures uh, uh, nearby to the tumours. It, it, it really has become a more of a sort of radiosurgical type uh, discipline now, and um, uh, as the technology continues to improve, the beams are coming, uh, becoming more and more focused. We're learning um, how important critical structures are and how we can spare those structures to, to save patient morbidity. And of course, as the treatment becomes more effective, more and more people are cured. And so the whole job becomes so much more satisfying uh, for that reason. So um, I've talked a bit about progressing your career. So you do a medical rotation, preferably, though I think if you are coming to work here from abroad, you may be able to get some exemption from that, but we'll still need some medical training. Um, you then, um, uh, if you want to be a, a, a medical oncologist, you're affiliated to the Royal College of Physicians and uh, have to um, work through a, uh, a, a F1, F2, possibly an ST job in oncology, which you can then put on your application form for the uh, 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 registrar training numbers. And you might need to do uh, an oncology staff grade type job before then, which is a, a, a non-training sort of intermediate post. In order to get the experience that you need, uh, plus also to become involved in uh, uh, audit uh, clinical improvement type projects, which you'll need to demonstrate really um, on your CV if you're going to be taken seriously um, uh, in, a, in a SPR number, uh, uh, a training post interview. The steps um, I, I, I made to improve my career are basically what I've just described to you. So, so it's no different if you're a if you're a UK uh, graduate. Uh, uh, the, the the training um, uh, uh, interviews are centralised now, so it's it's a bit less dependent than it was when I did it in terms of um, uh, finding somebody that you know in order to essentially sponsor you. But you will need. Uh, get references from active working oncologists um, in the UK if you do want to progress onto the onto the, reg, onto the registrar training scheme. Yeah, pr pr preparation for working on the oncology ward is quite an interesting question because um, much of the work as an oncologist is actually done as an outpatient. And when we're an outpatient, we see the patients that we're treating radically or trying to treat curatively who are going through the process typically of having a combination of chemotherapy and radiotherapy, which is a really tough treatment. And it requires quite a lot of um, uh, you know, expertise in managing the um, uh, side effects of chemotherapy and radiotherapy to get them through that treatment. And they're, they're pretty exhausted afterwards. Um, um, and also seeing the majority of our patients with stage four or metastatic disease as they're having ongoing uh, uh, chemotherapy or immunotherapy as part of their as part of their treatment, so the ward is slightly different because the a lot of people that um, end up on an oncology ward are actually people who are it's actually difficult to treat uh, as an outpatient. They are people that are uh, borderline in terms of their ability to get through uh, treatment um, uh, successfully. Uh, and so uh, it have to be admitted to be looked after, or are people who are, I'm afraid, and sort of approaching the end of their uh, treatment pathway. And so it's about the uh, transition between um, active oncological management and um, supportive care and, and sometimes end-of-life care. Uh, 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 so that's, that's often what happens on the ward. And so patients have a variety of uh, 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 medical needs and also some specialist oncological needs in terms of uh, pain control, uh, uh, treatment for convulsions if, for instance, they have brain metastases, treatment for, treatment for the side effects of their treatment if they've been on steroids long term. Uh, 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 treatment um, uh, 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 is multidisciplinary. Um, 
uh, very much involving a, a dietitian, for instance, speech and language therapists and the physios and OTs in order to improve people's mobility and try to get them out of hospital as quick as possible because patients obviously want to spend as much time as possible at home. Um, uh, 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 much as we look after them on the oncology ward. What do I enjoy most about my speciality? Well, I, th I, th I think I've touched on it already. You know, it's the fact that it is absolutely, it's, it's, it, the, the relentless progress and, and the way that that's actually really transformed the way we treat cancer patients over the last um, 10 years. People say to me, oh, your job must be um, uh, very depressing. And I said, well, you know, there are times when I have to have very difficult conversations with people which I try to do with as much care and compassion as I can, but that actually, most of the time, I'm spending uh, 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 time uh, explaining uh, the different uh, stages that uh, patients go through with their treatment, the different treatments that are available, how immunotherapy treatment can be you know, very successful over a, over a long period of time, um, and um, uh, the importance in being able to you know, manage all, 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 the, all those side effects for the patients that I see. Um, challenges in the speciality um, are, I, I'm pleased to say, um, uh, you know, more related to resources uh, than they are to uh, advancing developments. All the advances in radiotherapy require actually really quite expensive machines and hardware um, most of the treatment that we deliver with radiotherapy is with um, uh, uh, the manipulation of um, high-powered x-rays. And the machines to do that, the linear accelerators, these days cost about two to three million pounds each. And so obviously can only take, that treatment can only take place in very specialised um, centres and, and units. And of course, the um, uh, people will have heard about proton therapy. Um, uh, and a, a proton therapy machine... Um, uh, is able to deliver radiotherapy and mitigate the side effects still further. Uh, but those machines uh, cost between 40 and 50 million pounds. So as you can imagine, there's only a few of those available in the country, uh, you know, unless you're able to uh, 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 pay for one of those uh, privately. Though there, is, there, there are um, uh, uh, referral um, uh, mechanisms um, you know, if there's a particular need for proton therapy for a, a UK patient um, on the National Health Service. The, and the other, the other challenge, of course, is the expense of the drugs. Um, the um, immunotherapy drugs, which have been spectacular uh, uh, in uh, increasing the life expectancy of many people with metastatic disease, do tend to cost about £100,000 a year. Now, at the moment, that's paid for by the state, but actually there's a possible challenge really as people live longer and longer and longer as to really whether the state will be able to afford those types of treatments. And there may be a reckoning uh, uh, when, uh, when or if those treatments continue to increase in price, particularly with the introduction of personalised medicines. So that's where a, a tumour sample actually possibly taken from a biopsy, but actually increasingly taken from a sample of circulating tumour cells, which is taken from a blood sample, are used to generate um, uh, genetic profiles, which will determine um, it, you know, whether treatments are successful. So um, that has the advantage of not wasting so much money on treatment, uh, but also uh, it, it will actually you know, probably target the treatments more specifically but it will mean that uh, 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 the drug companies potentially will need to charge even more for those treatments. But so that's a, that's a sort of challenge that I can see uh, ahead um, in, in in the future. How would a patient progress? So uh, we see referrals um, coming to us uh, that are typically uh, mostly patients who have come via a specialised cancer referral. So what's called a two-week wait uh, referral. And those have a specific time frame associated with them uh, that, that the referral should be dealt with um, and the diagnosis made and treatment started, which is actually eight weeks, which seems like a long time. Uh, but actually, if patients have a quite a complex diagnostic process and indeed then progress to a complex therapy process, 
uh, long course combination of chemotherapy and radiotherapy is not actually that much time at all. Um, uh, and there are targets that we have to um, adhere to as much as we possibly can so that patients are treated uh, in, an, in an effective and timely way uh, without reducing their uh, uh, chance of being cured of the cancer. So lastly, well, what's my advice to aspiring oncologists? I, I think I would say that uh, uh, it's a great job. It's a challenging job. As I've said, there is as much or more optimism uh, uh, in the job than the, you know, the sadness that you um, uh, do have to uh, face up to um, when you're uh, talking to patients. Um, uh, and um, uh, because it's a job where uh, developments, pretty much in all aspects of it, are, are, are continually um, progressing, you have to commit yourself to, to lifelong learning. And, uh, uh, and I think that, t for me, really, uh, that's the interesting and important thing about the job. I haven't talked at all about our activity and research, which is, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, an important aspect of what we do, um, actually uh, getting people into uh, uh, clinical trials which continue to um, generate uh, improvements in outcomes and, and survival. Um, uh, and um, it's the sort of job, really, that... Uh, uh, I, I would I would just heartily recommend. I think um, it allows you to uh, develop your own interests, but also uh, be carried along on that wave of development, which I think is what keeps me interested and keeps me excited about the job. <laughs>